Adobe Lambda is scalable by design and has built-in auto-scaling, which makes it ideal for processing messages in real time, such as when we want to fan out the messages across many workers in order to improve our system's throughput. But what if we need to communicate with a legacy downstream system that is not as scalable and can't handle the amount of load we put on it, and the bad things happen and we cause an outage so how can we control the concurrency of our Lambda function so that these kind of problems can never happen? The easiest way to manage the concurrency of a Lambda function is to use the built-in reserved concurrency mechanism. Lambda has a regional concurrency limit, which limits how many instances of Lambda functions can run at the same time. It's a soft limit, so it can be raised with a support ticket. And every time a function is invoked, it consumes one unit of concurrency for the duration of that invocation. And all the functions in the region shares this pool of available concurrency units. And when you have lots of concurrent Lambda invocations, you can use up all the available concurrency units. And the next invocation will be throttled, which is bad news, especially for mission-critical Lambda functions. And the reserve concurrency lets you reserve some of that available concurrency unit for a particular function. That way, that function would always have some concurrency it can use to run. The reserve concurrency units are taken out of the regional pool, so there will be less concurrency left for all the other functions to use when they need to scale on demand. And interestingly, reserve concurrency also acts as maximum concurrency, so you can actually use it to control the concurrency of a Lambda function. And it's a very simple and effective solution, but it does come with some pretty significant limitations. The most important of which is the fact that when you use reserve concurrency on many functions, you're taking more and more of the available concurrency units at the regional level, and eventually, you might end up with not enough concurrency for the functions that need to scale on demand, leading to problems with lots of invocations being throttled because the concurrency units have not been distributed efficiently. So while reserve concurrency is a good solution for one-off problems, it doesn't scale with the number of functions that require concurrency control. And it puts you in a position where you need to micromanage Lambda concurrencies and it's not a game that you want to play, nor are you likely to do a good job. Which is why my preferred approach is to leverage the built-in scaling behavior between Lambda and its event sources, some of which can be configured with event source mapping for event sources that require polling, such as SQS and the Kinesis, and they come with built-in concurrency control mechanisms. For async event sources such as SNS and EventBridge, they will try to invoke a subscriber function as soon as a message is received, which means the concurrency of your subscriber function is going to grow linearly to the rate of incoming messages, unless you apply a reserve concurrency on the function, but then you have to deal with the shortcomings if they are applicable to you. On the other hand, if you don't have to use SNS or EventBridge, then SQS can be an interesting alternative for you to use to ingest messages and process them with Lambda, because it supports batching, so you need fewer invocations to process the same number of messages, but also because SQS has some built-in concurrency control. Because SQS is not a push-based service, so the Lambda service actually runs a cluster of pollers on our behalf. They pull messages from the queue and forward them to our function in batches. And when the function invocation is complete, the poller deletes the messages from the queue. We start with just five pollers, so you can have up to five concurrent invocations of your function. And based on the number of messages in the backlog, the Lambda service will scale the number of pollers up by up to 60 instances per minute, up to a maximum concurrency of a thousand. And each poller is going to invoke your function independently. So there's a one-to-one -one mapping between the number of pollers and the number of concurrent invocations you can have. And because of batching, and the pollers can only scale up by 60 per minute, so the concurrency of your function would grow much more slowly compared to SNS and the event bridge. And you can also set a maximum concurrency on the number of pollers as well by setting it in the event source mapping configuration under scaling config, which takes an object with a maximum concurrency integer value. This is the way that you should manage the concurrency of a SQS function. You should not use reserve concurrency with a SQS function because it leads to a problem known as SQS overpolling. 
where if the reserve concurrency setting on the function is mismatched with the concurrency of the polar. And so there are many more concurrent invocations than the reserve concurrency allows, and therefore many of them will be throttled and the SQS messages will be returned to the queue without having been processed by your function. And if you have a delete queue configured and this throttling behavior continues, then eventually some messages will be moved to the delete queue without ever having been processed by your function because every attempt to invoke the function had been throttled. So the messages were received multiple times, but never processed by your function. And so when it comes to SQS functions, only use the maximum concurrency setting to control their concurrency. Finally, let's look at Kinesis data streams, which like SQS is a polling based service and it supports batching as well. And so once again, the Lambda service operates a cluster of polars on our behalf and there's no cost to us for these polars. What's different about Kinesis is that you scale a Kinesis data stream with the number of shards and each shard would have a dedicated polar. There's a one-to-one -one ratio between shards and the polars and each polar would invoke your function independently. So there is also a one-to-one -one ratio there, which means there is a one-to-one -one ratio between the number of shards and the number of concurrent Lambda invocations. Except that is not exactly true because in the event source mapping for a Kinesis function, you can set the parallelization factor to a value between one and 10, which controls the number of polars that can process from the same shard concurrently while still preserving the message ordering with respect to the partition key. And that means the ratio between Kinesis shards and the Lambda concurrency is somewhere between one to one and one to 10, depending on your configuration. With a parallelization factor of one, a Kinesis function's concurrency would grow very slowly, but with a parallelization factor of 10, it can grow much more quickly. And the important thing is that this gives you very precise control of Lambda concurrency by adjusting the number of shards in your Kinesis data stream, which is a very useful tool to have in your toolbox. But concurrency control is just one aspect of choosing between these messaging services in AWS. There are a lot more factors to consider, such as cost and whether it supports replaying old messages and what the error and the retry behavior is like, or whether or not messages are processed in the same order as they are received. And so here's a table of the important considerations when it comes to choosing the right messaging service to use in your serverless application. I hope you have enjoyed this video and learned something useful. This is a preview lesson from my production ready serverless workshop. If you want more of this kind of content and learn how to build production worthy serverless applications, then please check out the workshop page and when the next workshop is. And I hope to see you there. Until then, goodbye for now.